welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer, and I'm still in Canada. So everyone calm down. There may be some sound and internet connectivity issues. Listen, they wanted us to hire a sound engineer. It was getting a little rough. Uh, but you'll be back in New York with the good internet connection and the good microphone, and all will be well in the next. By the time the Grand Prix starts, you guys, you, uh, no more Canada. <laughs> I've really, I don't know what it is about Skype in Canada, but I've always had poor connections when calling them. So obviously, not it's your poor people, just poor connections. I don't know what it is with the state lines. Right. Meanwhile, we could call Megan in the Olympic Village in Korea, and it was like she was next door. So I don't know. No problem. Mm -hmm. Blame Canada. Well, there has been a lot going on, but we have been infiltrated by the army of a Terry who breeds the students from Sambo 70 at the Russian test gates. Last week, they, um, you know, yesterday we were talking to Raphael, and he was saying that he thinks that the bodies are going to be damaged, and I think that there is probably some ample evidence for that, although it's so hard to know when... We cannot see <laughs> into the future. Uh, we'll have to kind of wait and see, but there's certainly uh, there's there's some there's some smoke and fire there. But I would I would say that um, it'll be interesting to see. I think regardless of whether or not it's lasting, what they have achieved is impressive. Right now, so whether or not they can do it when they are seniors, I think regardless. And the other thing I noticed is that I think by and large. Terry's technique is getting a little bit better. It's less funky. It's less uh, crazy, like we saw with Lipnitskaya, with so much of the arms, it seems to be a little bit more balanced, although we'll have to kind of wait and see. These girls are very, very slight and doing very huge jumps, so. Or, or she's now attracting a talent of a skater that can pull off things more easily. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like, these girls really are wunderkind. Mm -hmm. When I was watching your girl, Sherbakova, mm -hmm. she was beautiful out there, but she wasn't allowed to be as fully beautiful as she may be allowed to be elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I think she's able to, to achieve these great things in spite of certain um, teachings around her. My interest is so much more in the person and less the metal. So the idea that they are all damaging potentially cartilage and disrupting natural growth by putting such impact, you know, before things are formed, I don't know. That's a, that's a pretty tough call. Um, I would like to think that if I ran a federation, I would be much more concerned about longevity and health than just metals. I, but that's just me. I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't. I don't know. They have so many that it, it seems if one gets hurt, you have other ones. And I'm sure Terry ha will have more students come to her. What looks like happened is that they took the three uh, most talented girls who were also the prettiest and they got rid of the others. Like they picked the three child stars, the ones with the most charisma, the most musicality and the best jumping ability. And they got rid of the rest. The other ones were quite good. But maybe they were fourth and fifth in the group of juniors rather right. than, and maybe they're just capable of triple triples and some, I mean, they literally are picking the best of the best of the best and just the selection pool to get to those top three, they, it looks like they dismissed the rest or they left on their own. It, who knows? I mean, if someone is nasty to you and ignoring you uh, and you leave, <laughs> did you leave on your own or did they push you to leave? So... Yeah, I think, and I mean, we don't know the specifics, but when everyone leaves around the same time, it's it's always... Okay, are you ready to just dive into my hipster nonsense? To me, the skating is like a duet between the skater and the melody. Like, it's just like, what music are they, are they telling you? Are they skating to? And it should be like them and a melody creating something together that is unique, right? All of the Atiri programs were these loud, sound effecty, mood invoking, kind of um, incidental music, and they just go around and do their moves. And, and it's, 
it's funny because at some point we could put the needle anywhere in the album of us talking about a Terry pro we say it, but it's her whole camp, obviously the choreographers, the coaches, all these sorts of things. You drop the needle anywhere. And the conversation to me is always the same. Again, you have someone as amazingly emotive as Costa Naya. You don't have to waste a kissing you a time for us program on her. So my take on this is that Marina Zueva was someone who went to school and studied choreography and she went to the school of sport and that was her major. And the story is that Gordy and Grinkoff were like her thesis project. Mm. Roughly the details of that. Now we know Danny G was a single skater on the junior grand prix level. And then he became briefly, he became an ice dancer before he started coaching. I'm not sure that he ever went to school to study choreography and music and all of those things that you would study if you were to become a professional choreographer. This uh-huh. looks to be more learned by trade. This looks to be more like when we see American skaters go from competitive skater to choreographer. And usually they get some clients because they were a decent name in the sport. And then they do like Mariah's program. And that's what it kind of looks like. So to me, It looks like he had three girls. He had to make three competitive programs, the Junior Grand Prix. What I see is when you start to see all of the same transitions and all of the starting to see the same bonus things, it to me is formulaic. And to me, it looks like gymnastics because you talk about the duet. So when I see an Ina Bauer to a double axel to a stag jump, to me, that looks like you're doing a combination on balance beam where you're doing a flip to a leap because you get certain bonus points. Except here it's supposed to be communicative of the music and it has nothing to do with the music. It's just clutter to me. Or, and, and to the skater itself, themselves. You have such a gold mine with these girls. They'll clear, they are clearly hardworking. They are studious. They are immensely talented. You could give Costa Arnaya a dream come true and she will go for it. Why? Why give her some generic Romeo and Juliet program as if you were dealing with someone who could not do something? Because they don't care. The ISU doesn't care. The judges don't care. And they reward it and give them the points so they don't even bother. And you care, but they don't. And that's the whole problem with the judging and everything. And you get to the whole point. And there it becomes all technical and the second mark becomes a joke. And that's why they don't care because they get away with it. They don't have to care. They can throw this all together and spend the time on the jumps where they're going to get the points. That's the whole... The most, the most iconic performances to me come out of a, a, a sincerity. When it all clicks, sometimes you have to try things with skaters and the skater is trying. And then sometimes you get things where it's the skater truly... It's like an expression of themselves, an extension of themselves to emote this particular piece. And these girls have that capability. They do. To say something that is uniquely their own and have a voice and have a style that is distinctly there. But not in this camp. They literally are. You know, I think that... They're literally the same clothes. They wore the same outfits even. And I was like, come on. I literally don't know which one I'm looking at. So my take on them is, so when we talk about Anna Sherbakova, I think she has the most innate, um, I think Hostunaya is very musical too. So she, to me, Anna Sherbakova is like the Sasha Cohen of the group. She's the most little ballerina-ish. She okay. is going to hit all of the little notes. That's why they gave her Rondo Capriccioso. Last year, she had the Dreamcatcher program, and I thought that it really worked well. Maybe it accidentally worked well, but it was, I thought it really elevated her. And she's very expressive. Maybe that's where Coaster I also has a lot of musicality. I think she's but got like, I has like a, an emotional gut thing she can give you, but um, Sherbakova can't hit an ugly position. Like the, just something about the deportment is so beautiful. She's got the whole look. She's got, yeah. it's very Sasha Cohen. Like, she's dainty and she has all the beautiful positions. And then she's got the nice, she's got like the cute little face and the whole thing works together. They're all a pretty girls. So it's, um, but I think what you look at when you see her is that she is very expressive. Um, I'm not surprised that they went with kind of the violin piece. But what I think it's interesting is I actually would have gone full on Sasha Cohen 
because we are relating her to Sasha Cohen, right? So in our mind, she's like derivative of Sasha with better jobs, right? But in <laughs> their mind, they're probably really being derivative of Yulia with her, and Yulia was derivative of Sasha. So that's right. where they're getting the. the right. So they're copying like some Yulia things, and they're giving her Yulia esque um, yeah. elements to her skating because you can even tell with the spin and the, the kind of the, the way they do with the transitions and what they're doing Which with is, her. I think I think she would is much more elegant than Yulia, and I thought Yulia was elegant when she was in her prime. Um, but again, we were always talking about how flexible she was, not necessarily how stunning each position was. But Sharukova, like, even when she does, like, some waltz jump things as transitional elements, it's all so beautifully done. She has much better jumping basics than yeah. Yulia ever did. I think Yulia always had the really flexible back, which is great for rhythmic gymnastics and not so great for skating when you start to get to the multi-rotation jumps. Um, but what I would say um, about Sharukova is I actually would have given her the first long that Sasha did when she was a, a senior at Nationals, junior internationally, when she did uh, the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto. I think that that would work and be a little bit less... It feels gimmicky, giving someone Rondo Capriccioso in skating at this point. We've seen it. We've seen it given to 14-year-old girls before. It's just very textbook. Look, it could be a lot worse from Russia. I'm not compl like I'm not hating on Rondo Capriccioso. I'm just saying that it, it just feels formulaic in a way where they could really identify her more. Then again, to me, if you're starting at square one, mm -hmm. it's who's in front of you. She's so beautiful, you're right. Something like Mendelssohn Violin Concerto would work, not because Sasha did it, not because of any other reason. That's a great, beautiful, lyrical, like lilting, graceful violin is what Sherbakova is. Yeah. So, of course, any anything of that like thing will work. Why are you giving such heavy and emo music? I think it music? pays better. I think that Mendelssohn could, allows for more breathing and more longer held positions than Rondo Capriccioso, which always feels like you're rushing through it a little bit. Um, and this has a feeling of that those kinds of pieces have a feeling of uh, joy. Mm -hmm. It just gave, and these beautiful, youthful, talented girls, all this heavy emo yeah. stuff. Lighten it up. Let it be beautiful. Let it be light and airy and joyous, which would capture the most exciting parts of their skating, I think. And I do think Sherbakova has a little bit of Sasha in her. I mean, we saw her fall on the footwork, and then we also, and she already has broken ones. The beautiful ones are always breakable in these sports. I know. Um, she did, she hit the quad lutz in the warm up. She took a really whacked out fall uh, in the program. So that'll be something to watch on the Junior Grand Prix. Um, but yeah, to me, I put, so I was writing down all of the transitions in Kostranaya's program. Like I put IB. <laughs> Arrow 2A, arrow stag jump. Because it's Ina Bauer, double axle, stag jump. I mean, we see her do it. The stag jump is not as even as beautiful a position as I think Kostanaya is. Is capable of. Yeah. yeah. I mm. would put her doing a fan spiral to a back spiral. I mean, there's so much you could do with this girl. She's got a great edge quality. I just... Yeah, literally, like, I feel like these are the types of skaters every choreographer would be dying to work with. Because literally the sky is the limit. So then for it to be another version of the same is, is disappointing. So why do we need two Romeo and Juliet pieces? Like, why are we mishmashing as many Romeo and Juliets from as many films as we can get in one? Because Conrad Orzel did this too, right? So this is the second program we've seen this year that's same kind of similar hideousness. Why are we doing them? Like, can't you just do, even though it's trite, why not, like, a time for us just do that? You know, maybe have a little section with the lyrics if you want to be different. Like, what is the problem with just... Yeah, the other, even with, with the, kissing the kissing you element, <clears throat> they, they used, like, a, um, a karaoke soundtrack version, basically, which omitted the actual... They didn't play the melody, and no one sang the melody. It was literally just a compliment. And it was like, a compliment for what? What are we doing? And if you're not... Telling them we're not connecting. How are the pieces related? We're just supposed to know the backstory that they're both from two different versions of Romeo and Juliet. Like I was like, I didn't see the need for. It. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't know. 
it's one of those head scratchers. It's it's some of the worst aspects of skating so that people make fun of uh, that we're seeing here. Uh, I, just, I, well, I mean, we've, we've seen this just done over and over again. That's that's all. She's great. In general, she's capable of a lot. Uh, she's and she emotes. You know what I mean? So then even, like, when there was... Um, it was also interesting at the Russian test case, did you see they covered all of the advertisements, like with like that blue cloth? Because in some areas the blue cloth had come undone and you could see that they were hiding all of the advertisements underneath it. And I was like, gosh, it looks so much more elegant that way. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but even somebody like went up to that, that blue line wall at some point and was doing this thing, <laughs> like they were trapped and then they punched through. That was they just punched so through the glass. Yeah, that's an interior and I was like, I'm a punch staple. You know, that's what we we need. Um, yeah, I just think that I think Coaster Knight has a lot of command. And um, look, I don't think all three of these girls are going to last with the Terry. How can they all last, especially with Zagitova? If Zagitova is going to stick around, I mean, how long do you think all four of them are going to last in the same rank? If they Especially if they all are senior at the same time, maybe two of them will stay. I mean, it just one will be <laughs> injured, one will leave. Like this will this this yeah, is temporary. even the one you posted on the Facebook page that said Trusil was glorious short or program or whatever it was because she was doing the quads. You didn't write glorious. That was the name of the um, of the clip. I was as, glorious as we were about, by the way. If I say something is glorious, you know. No, 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 you did it. You what did Alexis Semeca say about me? She said, there's always a but. There's always a but. So. <laughs> but count, oh, wait, point, counterpoint. Yeah, that's how that works. Okay, so um, the thing is, as we're talking about with Raphael, we're not talking about a 10-point spread within a jump with this plus GOE and negative GOE. These quads, especially for the women, what she's, what she's attempting is enormous. And uh, she, I understand the spectacle. I know there's a debate about whether she's ruining her, her body forever. She's not going to get any plus GOEs on these. And that's understandable because she's attempting something outrageous. But in this new system, I don't see that being rewarded. Yes, I think it's very she easy to see. She's Russia. She is the junior world champion. And she just did a quad lutz. They're going to give her the points. You watch. You, I'm, I'm very intrigued on this plus GOE. You can't possibly pretend any of the quads she did here were plus GOE. And they shouldn't be. They're impossible tasks, and she's doing an admirable job. But it could be easy for those judges who aren't from the Russian Federation to just as easily say that's a negative five to me because she did it, but it was ugly and, and tight and, and tangled well, at the I landing. Think her, I think her quad lots will get positive GOE. You do? Yes. Okay. Not the one quad toe where she put her hand down, and some of these combinations they're eking out, but I thought a couple of the things that Trusova did really will get big points, especially the Lutz loop combination was so spectacular. Oh, um, yeah. I thought that both Zagitova and Trusova really nailed that. I think her musicality is the weakest of the three, but I think that she has inherently a lot of presence and speed, Poor posture and carriage, but it doesn't even matter when she's doing all of the technical points. And then they put Kill Bill under it. It's very driving music, and then it all kind of is gimmicky and works. But Also, speaking of gimmicky, apparently there's a whole debate about whether or not we were being racist with Star Andrews by saying that she was going for... Um... Because I said... It's, it's my fault, because I said that she was... Um... Uh... Basically, I'm trying to say that they're going for kitschy, they're going for, like, always going for that popular niche element, and they're always picking pop. Well, the mom was trying to champion specific works by specific artists. Derek, who knows, you know, who's leading this bad taste and who wants to take the blame. But my thing about this is, look, you have a popular piece of music, it'll get you attention, right? Like, one moment in time, maybe that's a seven, right? Like, it's a little bit... Yeah middle school girl sings a ballad in the solo competition. It's like a seven, right? Like, not the Gris, not the best singer. And right. wants to get attention because I don't think anyone can compete with Whitney Houston. So, but that doesn't get you as much attention to just skate to Whitney. So skate to yourself singing Whitney 
So that's like a 6.5 to me. But it'll get you on NBC, right? And especially with the fact that the U.S. has no depth, it'll definitely get you on TV. So that's like, it doesn't stretch you as a skater. You don't learn to hit any musical accents. You don't learn any nuance. It's just kind of a very like, it's well, totally. the it's goal like a, is not one of artistic merit. The goal is one of PR and yes. trying to angle it to get name recognition. So that's why it seems insincere to yes. the the sport, I call it art form, itself. You know what I mean? So then to do like a derivative Surya-esque program with the Jungle Beats and just... It's like a little... It's lowbrow and not really... She's not picking anything musical. They're not picking anything challenging. They're not working on developing her range as a skater. It's very, like, short-term gains is what I would describe that as. Penny smart, dollar stupid. Like, they're angling for a quick flash, and it's like, instead of... If you just kind of broadened and grew, it's too much specification too soon, if that was your real goal was was to promote certain artists and present yourself a certain way, find your way there yeah. before you specialize and over pigeonhole yourself. You to know? me, it's like she doesn't have that much ability, right? Like she has ability, right? Like she's talented, but had the U.S. have like normal levels of depth that they were accustomed to over the years, she wouldn't necessarily stand out just for her skating. Uh, right. So they, they do kind of like social media flash, which is what you do when you, you need know, to, need to like Adam performing diamonds. And that was very effective for him in the Olympic year because he's not necessarily going to stand out at the gala for just his results or skating or programs. Like you have to market yourself, but she's, they're doing the marketing yeah. before they have the skating to back it up. And they're not yeah, spending the, the, the horse. Yeah. yeah. And they're doing like, it's like cheap thrills. Like you're doing the, it's like, you know, she should be spending time on edge quality and learning how to really skate. And instead they're, they're getting a lot of flash attention. Yeah. It lacks depth. That's all. That's, yes. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say anyway, but. That's the truth. Well, I, I certainly knew that you didn't mean it. Anymore. Well, Jonathan, we, you know, not everyone get it, but that's what, when I was saying, if you want to skate to Beyonce, I was trying to come up with cheap, uh, obvious things that they could do uh -huh. for lots of attention and short term. Short term Lo lowest moments. common denominator. Yeah. Uh, lowest common denominator selections that pull and are easy to understand, but don't challenge either the, the audience, the public, or the skater. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I think that is my thought on that. I think with Trusova, she's capable of a lot. You know, I, um, Kill Bill, I think the sport is moving in that direction. So, I, I mean, that's. With her, it's just, will she last? She, I don't know. We'll have to see. I think that what she's capable of doing, she will give you memorable moments for a long time. And I hope that... Um, She'll give you records. There will be records. Yeah. It'll be curious. So what happens to the world junior champion who doesn't win senior now? Because what does happen? I think we've seen Yulia win titles, we've seen, all the ones that we have actually seen have gone on to, like, like, Tuk Dimitrova won a senior title. So Nikova right. won a senior title. And maybe they all didn't win junior world titles, but they were, you know, the top ones. I'm talking about the junior Grand Prix yeah. titles. You know. ah. So Nikova wound up winning. Lipnitskaya even got the team medal. So they all have something, but what will happen if someone is, like, a junior phenom and then they don't make it as a senior because they have a broken hip or a broken leg? That'll be interesting to me, but... Right. I do yeah, think this is a conversation. I yeah. do think out of the three girls that we see now, at least one of them will probably be on the podium in a year or two. Oh yeah. All three of them, I don't know. That's rolling the dice because of health and things like that. But I think But all we have the potential to very clearly. Yeah. All three have the potential to be a world champion. I think the fact that Medvedeva is trying to stick around and then trying to I am I, in my mind Medvedeva is gonna have like really big solo jumps and getting like the big plus five GOEs, and then she, it'll be kind of maybe change the game and the scoring and how this all works, but we're going to have to see. Uh, That's the thing. I think even with the quads, Trusova may find her out of the Russians, kept playing catch-up because of the GOE. Well, her technical score is 81 points. Like, that's just the base value. 
So if she does everything, so... But, but come on, you take three quads, and let's say she bombs three quads, which happens to anyone. Mm. If she bombs three quads, she's 15 points out yeah. from that already. Or arguably 15 points ahead, I suppose. But, I mean, it just seems that's too much of an ask. Yeah. But... I don't know. We'll have to see what's going to transpire. I think... I'm sorry, I, I feel like I'm being a bit negative, but I think it's because I think we both very much like these girls skating. I, I, I think we really... Actually, for different I really, reasons. I think they're all exciting. Me. I think they picked the right ones. Look, they got rid of one that had half half over the boot, half not over the boot tights, and they got Run, whose claim to fame was that she had lipstick around her mouth in the program. Like, I don't, I can't tell you anything about these other girls. And they were the two that I told you during the Junior Grand Prix final. I'm like, I don't care about these two. And right. Terry agreed. Okay, it was, so. uh, it, was, it was these three and then uh, Rika Kihara. And those were the most There was one other Russian, too, that was not with it, Terry because Sherbakova was injured last year. So, right? We don't right. even remember their names. Okay, that's what I'm saying. There are too many. They're non... The thing is, to me, I, and even from that Grand Prix final, you just watch Costa and Naya and you're like, this, come on, come on. How could you look at this and be like, this is our girl for the triple axel? I'm like, <laughs> if you look at her and think triple axel, triple axel, you're missing the point of what makes her so amazing. Although she has a great triple axel. She did a huge double axel here, which is probably where the triple yeah. axel will go. And the triple axel things on her Instagram, I mean, even with those wackadoodle entrances, it's just so mind blowing. I just don't want any, I don't want to see anything detract from just her beautiful skating in general. Her emotive skating. She's emotive, and I think you're right. I think um, it's that Sherbakova is just elegant. We would send Coaster Knight to Frank, and we would send Sherbakova to John Nix. That's kind of the difference. Exactly right, Dave. That is exactly right. Yeah. 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 True Silva, maybe she would go to Arashev. I mean, that's for, for <laughs> Raphael. You know, that's kind of mm -hmm. what we would do there. So we did see Brady Tunnell at the DuPage Open. Uh, we saw her short, although we know we don't have a video of the free skate. We know that she uh, looked pretty good. I, we heard that she uh, was going to do a triple-triple combination in the second half. I think of Let's Toe that she um, did a triple-double instead of a triple-triple. But she's in very strong form, as you would expect from Brady Tunnell in the summer. Mm -hmm. We expect her to be consistent. Uh, I think it's kind of been the... What she has going for her in her skating, for sure, that consistency. What, what do you think of? She, we, she worked with uh, Benoit Rashad again. What did you think of um, Benoit? Sorry, Benoit Rashad. Benoit. I'm sorry, Benoit. I was like, do you even bother correct everyone? Correct. Benoit. Benoit. Okay. Benoit. <laughs> so, I'll, we'll still like have Benoit. so many comments, by the way. Uh, I can even predict which a holes. Okay. But anyway, um, go. What did you think exactly. of Exactly. Um, the thing is, I remember when you and Jenny used to talk about Courtney Hicks. Oh, yes. And you would say, if she became the girl who would just be consistent, mm -hmm. she would literally have a place at the table. Mm -hmm. But she didn't, so she doesn't. Brady has, so she does. <laughs> so the thing about this Benoit choreography... Rachel like, Flatt once had that spot, yes. Well, once, yeah. Okay, so um, the thing is, at this juncture, at this point in the season, most of the discussion as we see new programs is, do we like the approach they're taking for this season? The music, the look. The, so I find myself kind of harping on musical selections and choreographer, like choreographer approaches um, only because of where we are in the season. Having said that, I think that Benoit choreographed a brilliant program for Jason Brown. The problem is, he doesn't have Jason Brown, he has Brady Tunnell. Yeah. So to me, your job as a choreographer is to help Brady Tunnell look like the best version of Brady Tunnell that she can, not look like um, a less than Jason Brown. It kind of had Roheen qualities to it at times, but they weren't being delivered by someone like Jason. And she yes. doesn't have to look like Jason. She needs to look like her, and someone needs to help her find what that voice is and how. She's so crisp and clean. So give her music.
that is crisp and clean. Play it. I just Give want her to thumb. bend her knees. I just want her to bend her knees in everything that she does. It's so yeah. surface of the ice instead of really getting in the ice and getting you know the rise but and flow. But that's the hallmark of how he's choreographed those opening sequences is it's all about getting low. And she doesn't, which is something she can work on, but don't draw our attention to it. He likes angles. Do you notice everything is like with the letter A in a lot of his programs? Like yes. They always stand with the legs apart and then... You know, it looks like the letter A. Um, yeah. In like the opening pose, you can kind of tell it. From, it's like all, he's like very angly. To me, it always looks like the letter A that's kind of teetering. Um, and it works for Alexa and Chris. And I think it works really well for pairs. And I imagine because Daisuke Takahashi has such wonderful edge quality and Dennis Ten that they really get what he's doing or Aliona yeah. and they can really use their edges and curves of the body to do really unique, cool pictures. Like Jeremy Abbott worked with him. And that was brilliant. Brady needs to, she needs to learn how to skate. Okay. Like she needs to learn how to really yes. skate. She's a good student. Someone needs, the right person needs to also be helping her. Cause you know, even she's when she does the chicken wings or the jumps, which are so ugly, but she doesn't like, it looks like she's fully formed. So if she can get the jumps around with the arms is the way they are, she doesn't have to change them. We just have to look at it. And Cause the loop silly. was interesting. The Lux Loop was, I mean, the problem, again, it kind of had that mist above the ice, so I wish I could have seen the feet closer, but it looked pretty good. It looks pretty good. She doesn't get the huge height that we would yeah. love. You know, she's not getting Gracie Gold height, Yuna Kim height on these jumps. They're very complete. It's very fine. As Clean position. Yeah. Although hopefully she gets the rotation. The flip yeah. makes me a little nervous when people do it on the curve, and it looks like you know, when they do it from a three turn instead of a mohawk and they're going on a curve and it looks Especially just... Especially in this camera angle because it was like coming right around and it literally looked like she came out of nowhere and was like going to hit like the stand. I mean, that was just the camera angle. But. Someone like Brady who's prone to under rotations, that makes me a little nervous, but we'll have to see kind of... You know, I mean, that's a keen observation about this letter A kind of this sort of thing. And she does this thing where then she puts the leg behind her. Yeah. And the idea is there, but you need, I want someone to help her make that look good. Because right now she's just trying to recreate the move that was taught to her, but I want someone to really help her point the toe, really extend it, really lift it higher, really make it. So she's that. trying to be artsy and different. It's almost like you're trying to be the skating version of the film Amelie, right? Like you're trying to be kind of... Uh, uh, quirky and, and charming. And yeah, she, she tried, tried to be herself, but I don't know. Who they, I don't know if she knows who she is. So I, and that's all that on the ice, me. not off the ice, but on the ice. But I yeah. think the thing with her is, so obviously they, they're trying to mature her and trying to give some depth to her. I think she needs to go the full skating PR route and change the look. I think that the dress is nice. I think she needs to change the hair. I think they need to cut and color it and condition it and give her like more of a brown instead of like the dirty blonde and with some maybe some highlights or I don't you know do something with it. We need Tyra Banks to fix the the look, the makeup and the face. I think the makeup and the hair can like you can work to make her look new. I was talking to Aliona about it. She agreed. She thought <laughs> that they need there's like a makeover that needs to happen because you need to, to, to have us all take, take a, a second, second look. look. And, and they literally put Michelle stuff. Kwan's hair up in a bun, and everyone was like, oh my god. You know? like, Yeah. I mean, stuff improved and changed, but it was it was not the biggest transformation right. overnight. You know, like... You well, know, but that was the whole reason for it, was because they got to the point where the product was so good, and for some reason she was off that podium at 95, and they're like, well, then I guess we've got to do this. Yeah. But to me, they always knew what made Michelle special were these lyrical qualities, so they brought them out. And again, to me, Brady, consistent, clean, there's a cleanliness, there's a precision, there's a crispness, that all redeeming qualities, and you can find music that brings that out. A they real have to find crisp. moves, and they have to find things that make her really special, because right now, she's kind of generic and consistent, and it's it's like reliable, like a, it's reliable like a Ford Taurus, and it's, but it's not, um, it's not, if other people skate well, she will not place well. Right. 
if other people, it's like Romanian gymnastics. You're waiting for the other ones to make a mistake so that you can place ahead. You look for the steady one and sneak in. Yes, but you're not, you're not wowing anyone. You know, you're Simona Aminaring it, if you know what that means. If not, like, you're kind of, you're, you're betting on other people to make mistakes. And that will often happen, and it's a post-Olympic year. And I think she very well could move up in the world because people will make a lot of mistakes. People are growing and changing coaches and, and not wearing tutus and going, you know, there's a lot going on this season. But I think that there's, it's going to be really interesting. I'm just curious that, you know, pendulum swing and all this kind of stuff, but this, we're in an emo mode. Mm -hmm. And I don't, it doesn't suit skating so well from, from my standpoint. I know we've had an exceptional, like a Jeremy Muse program or something like that, that comes along where someone does it because they have to do it and they emote and bring something unique to it. But for the most part, like, then when you get somebody like Ashley doing news or Brady doing this or these Russian girls with their pain and their breaking through glass and da, 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 it's just kind of like, oh my gosh, you guys, everyone is like a teenager. Can we just lighten up the mood a little bit? I don't know. I don't know why, why artsy has to mean so heavy. Well, yeah, it's, it's, oh. it's I think that Benoit does some really good things. I think he's really good with pairs. You know, I would send maybe um, Vanessa and Morgan to him to do some interesting stuff for their look. Yes, I, I agree. Even Megan and Eric, I think he could do some cool stuff with them. Like, he's kind of like, you know, he's the kind of guy that you go to because he's going to break all the traditional rules. And he can break the rules probably because he once learned the rules of choreography and, you know, what you're supposed to do with two people. And it's kind of like the anti-Marina Zueva. And it kind of works. But I think that you you need to know the rules before you can break them, right? Well, so you are making an outstanding point. Because, yes, he's giving people unconventional, but we missed the part where it was conventional. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, Aliana brought up a good point where a lot of it is quite complex. Like I was saying, like also with that Roheen, Jason Brown kind of thing, which to me is what, what that program reminded me of, this kind of thing. And I thought it's just almost one step beyond comfortable for her. Mm -hmm. And and I, is it is it Benoit, is the choreographer's job? Is the choreographer's job to give them a program? Whose job is it then to hone her look and make sure that, each move is being done with quality. Yes, Sandra choreographed Katarina Vitt in Carmen, but half of the time she wasn't coming up with steps for Katarina Vitt, she was adjusting all of her positions. So who's adjusting all of Brady's positions as she does it? This is, it's like a two-part component here. Yeah, you create it, but who's making it look as beautiful as possible at all times? That's and, and that's the part I'm missing. I really hope that Eliona starts helping her because I think she needs some of that. Desperately. You know, Alexa has that personality that's easy to bring out. I was just going to say. With Brady, I think it comes down to music selection. And they actually need to pull a Star Andrews card and do something interesting. Like, she needs a piece of popular music that people will like so that when she's skating, you start to have positive associations. Like, I even would go, like, Evanescence with her. Like, take something, like, a little rock ish just to give her a little bit of edge do something with the hair try to do anything with her you know like bring me to life anything you know just try to make her desperately more interesting because that's how it's a game at this point and it's it's finding a vehicle to get to make her look the best and i think music but you know what think it's safe? i think for me as an Olympic <laughs> But to me, the source is, what piece of music gets Brady excited the most? I need her to pick it, whatever it is. Well, the same it way. They said she loved it. That could be a problem, too. But did she pick it, or did she love it after it was presented to her? I want her to pick it. Only she knows what's actually going to inspire her, and I want her to pick that, because to me it doesn't matter what it is. You know when that skater genuinely turns on, in interest and in a desire to express. And I think then, at this age, and with her experience level, you can trust Brady to pick something. 
And if she picked some cheesy pop song, I want her to try it. I want her to do something she has selected instead of me just hearing a cheesy pop song and assuming I'm going to find Julie Marcotte's name somewhere. Well, doesn't Laura <laughs> usually give them a CD with options on it? Like, well, let's do that. Let's do, I don't, I don't want to try, well, I don't trust fine. some of these games. But I'd be intrigued. Brady, you also make me a CD. Yeah. And, and as, as the choreographer and let me listen to your CD, you listen to my CD with several options. Yeah. Let's, let's go from there. Because she's I'd probably going to win nationals again. We know Mariah's training, but in all reality... I think Brady has the best shot to win that yeah. this year. Uh, but just, dear God, we need to do something. It's just, it's not... Um... But again, we've got someone... Um, I don't think Brady is stubborn. I don't think Brady is lazy. I, he's very talented, very clean. The right person can help her. I really do believe that. Yeah. If, remember Tom Dixon, when you suggested yeah. that. Tom Dixon would, was like... I don't know. I'd love to work with her. I know. I think Hello? he's very complex with his movements. I wonder if that would be too much but I, for her at this point, but I think she would learn how to skate. You know, I think she would learn what she needs to. I mean, I was, so I was watching the Robin Cousins Going for Gold documentary, which is what all people should be watching. You get to see uh, the okay. Fosses. By the way, Krista seems... I thought that I once was emailing with Krista Fosse and thought that she seemed like a little scary. I, I don't think that that was like, I don't think I was misreading that because I was, we were watching her coach him, like coach Robin Cousins. She didn't like his arm going into his double sow cow. It's like, let me tell you. I don't know if it was just the Germanness coming out or the accent, but like, bless. But that's the thing. Carla was the face of that camp. Yeah. But she was, she was the woman. Running, around, pulling all those strings behind that curtain. Yeah. Tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Krista Fossey. Love. Okay. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she had a lot of feelings about his um, fins. And I don't know. Somehow Carlo's voice sounds funnier when he's angry. So it doesn't affect me. It doesn't sound like someone's going to work it's in the camp. It's still charming in a way. Yeah. He's, a, he's charismatic. So it has a charismatic quality. Part of that's in the romantic language you came from, but like the declamatory German is pretty intense. <laughs> it was amazing you and Mueller always seemed so nice on TV. <laughs> <laughs> she seems special. Now let's talk about the pairs at uh, the Asian Trophy. So Pung and Jin are doing La Vie and Rose. Uh, Clear cut. She chopped it all up. She got the Brady, what the Brady needs yeah. to do. And and it's highlighted. Do you see? Yeah. She got highlights. She got highlights. And they're 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 trying to emphasize that. You they've clearly put a lot of time into this pair. So they look like look, they're never going to be the most special <laughs> Chinese pair, but they're at least trying to make them like a silver or bronze medalist. Like they're they're working, they're yeah. pushing it. They're one of those pairs that really, to me, <clears throat> we talked about this a little bit with Megan in the Olympic uh, recap. The depth of pairs is so intense. No, I don't see them as like all-time medal favorites or, or a pair to remember throughout the ages. But I view them higher than they've been placing. Yeah. You know, I mean, there is some real quality to their skating. It's just not maybe star quality. And I wondered if the Chinese felt like um, maybe they snubbed them a little. Like, like it was, was very clear that they were like, you guys go over here for a little bit. I think so. And the other team got injured. I think this was always a longer term process because they knew she had such jump issues and that they had to work with them. And Big China is usually pretty reliable to throw in there. Right. Maybe you could get a medal with him somewhere. <laughs> this team, to me, has always been, had more long term potential. They've had some more musical moments that they've been working on developing little cutesy kitschy things with the My Drag and everything like that. I think here we did see the, the double sow cow, but because we're not going to be seeing a lot of quads now that the ISU has reduced the, the, the value of the quads, which helps teams like the Russians, Tarasov and Morozov, or Stolbova and Klimov, the fact that everyone is pretty much doing similar throws, 
the fact that they do the big Chinese throws should get them more GOE than other teams. And if they land them and can manage to land the side-by-side -side jumps, it should help them. Because when you see them next to juxtaposed against the North Koreans, the difference in the throws was just so astronomical that I would be giving them so much GOE because the North Koreans had very, very small throws. Further, I thought the North Koreans need to... Need to please pay, have some sort of a treaty where we can allow uh, Hongo to help them because they're missing the big throws, is what I right. thought. Yeah. Right. And recycled those programs again, and they were such memorable programs because they received such attention, the costumes were so unique um, that unfortunately, I mean, I wasn't quite sure, are they keeping those programs this year? You know, the ISU website, we don't have ICE Network. ISU website, Wikipedia, these kinds of things, they're so outdated that they don't have any of this new stuff, even though our programs are being competed. So if, where do you find all this information, or do you just know because you're actually just talking all the hours? <laughs> who's doing what programs and who's keeping what? Like, Because I was like, oh my gosh, to recycle this again, it just seems a bit... I, I, people are going to be rooting for that North Korean team this year, and it kind of makes it hard to do that when it seems tired. Well, first of all, we knew that they worked with Megan. Megan has not seen them, really, since the Olympics. And I thought that was interesting because she was on the practice sessions there. Uh, but I was, you know, very curious. I keep tabs on things, Jonathan. I do my I know. job, okay? That's what I was saying. <laughs> like an annoying thorn, I'm always there. Now, anyway, um, what did you think about... Uh, we know that you have a special place in your heart. You really hate Julie Marcotte way more than I do. But you have a special... <laughs> Wrong word. I just don't care for the aesthetic. And when I hear like some like mom music, I'll call it. Do you know what I mean? Like Canadian. Okay. Just mom listening to like soft rock. You know, the minute I hear that coming out over an arena speaker somewhere, I'm just like, oh, Julie Marcotte in the room. Here we go. Easy listening, light rock, 93.9 FM in Chicago. Like I was like, here we go. Here it comes. <laughs> she does have that vision. For KMT, it feels like there's the. And you know what? You know why I was just being silly about it. I mean, you know I love KMT and all these things. <clears throat> She's a feisty girl, and they're always trying to make her more feminine. You know they, that? They're always trying. To make her yeah, um, Luba and Dylan, like I, um, uh, Barbara Underhill and Paul Martini, like that's not really, in my opinion, I think they're missing the mark on what they have with KMT. I think KMT almost has like the capability to have like a raucous Bette Midler quality, but they don't own it because they think that you need to be light and feminine and skinny. And they try to get away. In my opinion, it is just I it. think KMT has power to her that they kind of don't exploit. Yeah, a fierce quality that, um, that I would love to see them utilize. Then they put her in pastels. It's it, the past. It just the whole thing just seems dated and non-relevant as a result sometimes, and that's just a silly packaging thing. And it, uh, it was a total offense. It's one of my favorite songs in the whole world. Is Roberta Flack singing the first time ever I saw your face? It can make me ugly cry, and I was ugly crying, but that's because it sounded like this woman was Aaron Neville, like drowning underwater or something. I couldn't figure out where they even found a recording of this, but. So that wasn't why I was ugly crying, but we knew that KMT had an ankle injury, but they have been training. I think that this was just a bad, rough first outing. First, a bad first pancake, but... This, this just seemed dusty, first approximation. I wasn't concerned about that element concerned. of things. They'll things, be so. fine. They, I actually was really... He looked a lot better to me, and I'm not sure if they've just... I mean, I think they're masking it by the costume he's wearing, but the cut, he should wear it always. Um, yeah. It really helped the shoulders and the posture look... Way good. It's experienced a lot now. Yeah. And, and those kinds of things will, even though there's no new information, there is no new technical ability, it just pushes you forward a little bit somehow. She was the one being mental. And so yeah. the jump mistake happens, right? Like that's just, and the twist was kind of crashy. So who knows what really went on with that within their timing and technique. But the spin error was like, girl, that was that was not good. That was that was gonna. To me, that was points. dull. Look, that's a summer error and whatever. But that was one of the th mistakes that you're like, okay, this this program has officially gotten 
rough AF. Like that was when the, when the spin goes like that. Danger that's... zone. Yeah. Yes. Welcome, Welcome to the, the danger, danger zone. zone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Camille and Drew. No, I think that they look really nice on the ice. They have a nice musicality. They just cannot do a twist. And it's so, it's so bad. Okay, but, but, but talk to me about this twist. I know, obviously, she crashed. crashed. She just, like, just full-blown, two-footed, landed it. They literally but it was like, can't do it. She got pretty high up. I know, and it just doesn't happen. It's like, so, she, uh, now, now we need Megan, because especially, I think she's been working with them, right? Is that her... Send them, bring out Delilah. I don't know. The they height, need to bring out Delilah. I mean, the height was there. I was like, oh, she goes up so high, but then she just kind of let herself go up high. Yeah. So I was like, where is the disconnect in the rotation? Because I thought I did a good job of getting her the height. And she hasn't always been the best competitor, even though she is capable of doing sow and toe for sure. And she's capable of doing the throws, but in competition, she's a little more... Fragile, but they do have a really special quality. But I think I agree. I think ultimately they may have to change something in their preparation. Even though I think for right now where they are is good, I just think that they may need to work with outside help and then come back. Like there's Even something that's some missing. Some of the things like parts were working. Yeah. So that's why, I'm like, oh, are we also joining you mid process? Excuse me, Canada process. Process. Well, like, like are. I don't know. There, there may be some no, limitations. Did they have that kind of height with it before? They had a double before, Jonathan. They either do a double or a really messy, crashy triple that doesn't really work. So, okay. and that's okay. like it's kind of like the built-in. It's kind of the the built-in. You may not make the free skate at worlds type situation because of this twist. But something about it, I felt like ingredients were there. I mean, she's pretty, he's handsome, they're musical, we want it to work. Um, one team that we didn't we didn't get to see, Justine Brasseur and her new partner, they are have a lot of promise, but they had a rough outing as well. So it was not a good... Um, and, and, and I don't know what did they know about Julia and Charlie before we all did. Like, are they starting to wear the, the weight of that pressure of being the third Canadian pair? Um, perhaps. I think or second. That, Second Canadian pair. Oh my gosh! Well, what? I think everyone thinks that once Justine's partner gets his citizenship issues, that they will be challenging okay. KMT. That's kind of the thought. She's got a nice look on the ice, but I think for KMT, you know, they're now the number one pair. That's an adjustment. It's a new cycle. It's just a lot. They miss some training time, so right. We'll kind of see, but I think that this it was just it wasn't the one thing I will say is that okay, Camille and Drew, they're not the most. Um, Consistent. They're not the Brady Tunnels of the pair world. Why does Julie Marcotte always do the same transition before the throw where the girl flips upside down and twists around before we go into it? Camille is the last girl who should ever be doing that. Why can't we just do an Aliona and just set up a beautiful throw and just do it and do it well? You know, like, let's just... I'm gonna be, now I'm going to need to, to reread some rules because, you know, we got rid of the flipping arm over the head for the GOE. Now that we have plus five, we're taking away things that can help you earn more GOE. Um, and so I'm intrigued, like, how much is that intro? Because, you know, I cannot stand that transition either. It, no one looks good in it. It looks awkward. Literally, you're just holding someone upside down in a weird position, and it doesn't match the music, and usually, more often than not, hinders the jump itself. Yeah. So, um, and, and I, I think even Madden got that garbage at the Olympics, and she got higher points than everyone. Honestly, this is such a gut thing. If you do a Chinese throw that is so enormous and high and beautiful, and you land it, they're going to give you points. So why not be clean at this? That's the Marcotte school. That's my one issue for it is that they play the rules so literally. They're so literal about the rules, whereas. Other schools are sometimes not as concerned and more concerned with getting the elite done. This, this is more than just like, it shouldn't be plus five, minus five, which we've established, I think all of us agree with. But in this thing, if you're going to do something that mucks up the jump, if you land that clean, they will give you those points. But 
Also, to me, the whole point of a transition be something that not only makes it more difficult, but enhances, and that it comes seamlessly out of. There's nothing seamless about it. There's nothing Why elegant a pretty about dance it. lift into the throw? Why is it always the girl flipping upside down yeah. and then doing Awkwardly. it? Awkwardly. Like, like, um, like a cowboy, like lassoing up a girl, or, or I don't know, like a caveman throwing a woman over his shoulder. Like, there's something so not elegant about it. Yeah. It's, it, Julie does it in almost all of her teams. Yeah. It's the, it's the hallmark for it. Yeah. And, and, yeah I, don't know. I would just try to make Camille look like as much of a, like, Sprite Zero version of Katya Gordieva as she could. You know, just go for the high bun and the, you know, yeah. make her look like a Canadian cop. Like, try to do something. I mean, right. Do the look. Do the yeah. look. Spend all the time in making her look pretty and... Because there's some intangible thing about them. Yep. It's there. It's there. But they 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 have more actual hurdles to get, to get through. It seems. And I think we can actually. So it's interesting. Drew is clearly the more stable of the two, right? Like he has a lot of talent on the ice, and I almost feel like they hold him back rather than really enhancing him and having her kind of be. Yeah, like they also they kind of need one of those misogynistic Peter Obergard programs where the girl dies or something like that, that would be a really good thing for this team. I think actually like a real Artur Dmitriev, like he's the star and I would really play up Drew's ability because he's a really good pair boy. And I think yeah, like, like, that girl. Yeah. literally let him, let her be Madison chalking it around him and just, yes, yes, but you know what? Not my favorite Peter Overgaard story. I mean, because you remember the Olympics? First of all, sometimes I forget he has an Olympic bronze medal. Sometimes. Um, and whatever happened to her? Do we know? I don't think they speak. So that's the first thing. Okay. Um, they and clearly don't, by the way. They clearly are not, like, they're not pen pals. Good, but I don't see her around skating at all. I think she is in some I, I mean, I'm sure she is. I am just unaware of where that is or in what capacity. What was um, her talent? He was painting masks in their up close and personal. It's the most awkward up close and personal ever. First of all, <laughs> there was like a weird sexual tension between the two. And it looked like they weren't speaking the day that they filmed it. And then they had to like sit in someone's living room. He's painting masks and like she's doing, it's the most staged thing in the history of. Up but also remember, um, the, somebody dropped the camera on the Olympic ice during their short. Oh dear. Okay. Yeah. It was either. I have to read. I have to brush up on my Calgary trivia. But it was something like they dropped it as they were skating the short, or they were skating out to the short. There's a whole thing, and then maybe it ended up being someone related to them did it. I don't know. I have Calgary to, is my favorite Olympics, by the way. Like it was uh, Lillehammer, but when you melatonin it, you've got to watch Calgary. Not only the ladies. There are some weird brother-sister Ron Ludington teams going on that are, like, real trash but great to watch. And um, the ladies, the depth, the, I mean, the, I watched Midori there. It was so good. Yeah. No, but you really need to go down the rabbit hole with the, the pairs and the dance and the lower rank. That is... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm on it. <laughs> so, I mean, there's, there's some hidden gems. And the fluff pieces are wonderfully stereotypical and yeah. offensive. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a, that was a huge success at Olympics. There was a lot of amazing things that came out of that. They just basically let Dick Button say whatever that he wanted. You know, that yeah. was the real... Mm -hmm. So, anyway... From, from, from Frank saying that. <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. Oh. So, <laughs> I'll never forget because when you watch the Robin Cousins, speaking of Agnes, her remember he points out Jan Christoph Simone and Robin Cousins competed against him. And then that's who's coaching Agnes when, and he makes the comment about how he wasn't a strong free skater and neither is this girl. So that's, yeah. <laughs> they had a lot of good ones when you go down those. Like, I think when I watched the Robin Cousins ones, like right before it came those John Curry ones. And there are several very good John Curry uh, documentaries also worth, worth watching on, um, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm gonna buy his Black Ice book. You should buy it too. We could we could talk about it. Yeah, I'm trying to order it, but I don't know what it is. It's on happening. eBay. It's the one that had it got it got pulled. It was Amazon, and then there was a glitch. That's the one that got pulled from the bookshelves. So then we really need to have it. He really lets. Okay, it. so something 
he wants what's happening, happening there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He let loose on some of our friends in the skating world too. Like he was mean about everyone. So. Yeah. It happens. It happens. <laughs> but I think, I think we at least need to read it. You know. Yeah. Okay. And okay. We're like the five people that will care what he actually said. Yeah, about exactly. Us. And I'll probably pay too much for it anyway. I remember when I ordered Sonia Bianchetti's book translated into English, I spent like way too much money on it. And With like King Jenny Kirk on the cover. Yes. <laughs> no, it's not Jenny Kirk. Yes, it is. It's Jenny in her deflator mouse dress. Her cracked ice? Yes. Literally, it's like a drawn version of Jenny, and they take out all of the facial features. But it's her. That's her dress. That's it. Yes. Yes. Oh, I have to rewatch the cover. Okay. Or relook at the cover. Okay. Yes. She said that Katarina Witt's figures were, were terrible, but it was the right thing to do because she was such a star. I'm like, well... Yes. So I got it. She always got it. Yeah. <laughs> Those figures were hideous, but, you know... We, yeah, aren't we glad that aren't we glad that they cheated because she's so entertaining so exactly exactly and the one um speaking of missing books again i say it all the time in case someone knows those those lu chen books yeah i don't know where they've gone that they were all like snatched up lu chen tarasova we need to all of them you know all of them <laughs> all right well jonathan it's been another outstanding week I, was, I know. I felt like it was negative. I felt like it was negative, but I love all of these skaters and just always want them to find their own voice to the best music that's authentically and vulnerably them. That's all. That's all. Listen, we're also like watching like iPhone videos of these Russian. Of course. Of course. That were just horrible to watch. I actually am really excited to watch them on the Junior Grand Prix. We know that you will prefer all of the Japanese skaters. I will be rooting for my Atari girls, and that's that's okay. But um, oh, That can be our storyline, although we know who will win, but I, sentimentally I'm very excited <laughs> to see all my Japanese girls unleashed on the Grand Prix circuit. <laughs> yes, I am very excited as well, so as always, I want to remind you to hold an edge and look sexy. Bye, guys. <laughs>